genitals. They didn't look at anything. They didn't do tap her knee to see if her reflexes were there. All they did was take blood tests, look at her eyes, feel around her kidneys, uh, and do a, an electrocardiogram. I mean, this was, and the blood tests were sizable, like eight vials of blood. It became obvious after a series of these interviews this was definitely going on. Now, occasionally I'd have to throw out an interview, just literally say this didn't happen, because I felt the person was a little too eager to please me, didn't remember that well, might be sort of trying to remember things. To, But most of these people didn't have any sense of where I was going with these questions. They honestly didn't. In fact, they always wanted to talk about something else. And I was always the one sort of bringing them back to this. First, I was taken to the Harbin Public Security Hospital. This public security hospital was a military hospital, especially for the examination of inmates on death row. After I was taken there, I saw many Falun Gong practitioners, all male, in very good physical conditions, who were undergoing exams there. So after we saw each other, we realized we knew each other, and the police immediately separated all of us. First, they examined my kidneys, testing my blood, examining my liver, skin, and eyes. After the examination, they diagnosed that my body was diseased. Meanwhile, the World Organization to investigate the persecution of Falun Gong had organized teams to call Chinese hospitals. The callers posed as the relatives of patients needing transplants and asked the hospitals whether they could get organs from Falun Gong practitioners. They posted transcripts and recordings of their conversations online. But some critics suggested that the transcripts were not credible because of the secrecy surrounding the Chinese transplant industry. But in Phoenix TV's documentary, one doctor admitted that he had been interviewed. I in the documentary, Dr. Liu is given only a transcript of the interview, not the original recording. But NTD obtained the sound of the original over 10 minute long telephone conversation, in which Dr. Liu tells a very different story. Investigation into allegations of organ harvesting is the final chapter in the story of Falun Gong. But the story is still being written. Around the world, Falun Gong practitioners continue to use the media, the arts, and the internet to put pressure on the Chinese government and expose the persecution around the world. Inside China, Falun Gong practitioners also continue to peacefully resist the persecution by distributing printed materials. VCDs, or handmade crafts to promote Falun Gong, and expose what goes on in China's prison system. In seven years, Falun Gong had gone from being virtually unknown to having anywhere from 70 to 100 million followers. Each now has a story of repression and terror. 
Right now, those stories are buried beneath a sea of propaganda, an internet blockade, and the threat of persecution. But, one by one, as those stories are uncovered and told, the first ten years of the 21st century will forever be remembered as Falun Gong's decade of courage.